It's time to take a new approach to finding true fulfillment in your career, health, and state of mind through insightful conversations with those who have found their professional and personal passions while achieving balance. Whether it's entrepreneurs, athletes, or healthcare professionals, we bring you real people, real growth, right here on the Boost Podcast. Now, here's your host, Elena Lipson. Boo Squad, and welcome to episode 31. Elena Lipson here, and I am so psyched to introduce today's featured guest, Tony Teagarden. Tony, are you ready to join the Boo Squad? Ready to rock and roll. So before we dive into today's episode, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Mosaic Growth Partners. Mosaic Growth Partners provides growth strategy consulting to entrepreneurs and organizations in the healthcare and older adult baby boomer market. They can help you bring a new product or service to market, identify and engage new customers and partners, or grow your market share. They also provide coaching and training. For more information, go to mosaicgrowth.com. That's M-O-S-A-I-C-G-R-O-W-T-H dot com. Now back to today's featured guest. So Tony is an online marketing and lifestyle coach who works with coaches and experts, including me, to turn their expertise into high-ticket online group coaching programs so they can leverage their time and enjoy life without being consumed by their business. His clients have generated millions of revenue over just a few short years in dozens of niches. He has more than 20 years of sales experience, and his whole sales philosophy is based on serving your ideal prospect and providing value. He has a hundred Hundred percent happy client and result rate, in part because he only works with people who are open to the type of transformation that his program requires. And I've benefited so much from working with you, Tony, over the last six months. So I knew I had to share this amazing expertise and my experience with all of you. So Tony, let's just jump right on in. What are the three things that we should know about turning your expertise into a high ticket business coaching program or workshop? Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, by the way. The first, I would say the first thing is first is just if you want to get paid big ticket, because I'm not really a big fan of selling low tiered tickets, ticket items like 27, 197, not even $500 type of programs, which most people might see online. So one of the biggest things I know to get paid big ticket is to solve big problems. And even the caveat to that is solve big problems that people already care about, which That's number one. Number two would be to intimately know your prospect's pain and probably even a more fundamental way to articulate that is to not only understand the pain, but understand the systemic issues that show up in their lives because of that pain. And then number three would be to, once you have those two particular things down, to make offers of perceived value. And what I've discovered is people don't give you money. It's because they don't perceive it as valuable. And that generally comes back to our ability to, if I had to sum all of this up, it would be that the key to turning your expertise into a lucrative online type business program of what I do is if you can articulate someone's problem better than they can say it to themselves, they'll automatically see you as the authority and seek you out for the solution. So you don't necessarily have to have a book. You don't necessarily have to have, you know, to be endorsed. You don't have to have tons of testimonials even, believe it or not. You just have to be able to articulate their problem back to them better than they can state it to themselves. And generally that all comes from knowing what the big problem is that you're solving intimately understanding the prospect's pain and ultimately the systemic type of issues that are showing up in their lives as a result of that, and then ultimately crafting all of those into an offer of perceived value. So it might be a little lengthy there, but we can always dive back into any one of those pieces. Yeah, I definitely want to go into more detail. But before that, I want to back up to really the first thing that you said. So you said that you're not a fan of these low-tiered programs or collateral that people sell even at the $500 level. And I know that might be different than what a lot of people are thinking about how they can share their expertise. So I want to hear your philosophy on kind of why you're not into selling those type of programs and you encourage people to go more high ticket. Yeah, absolutely. For me, it's a lifestyle choice. Number one, there's also some very, very specific strategy in the fact, you know, if you're out there selling a $27 product, 
you got to sell a lot of $27 products to make any money. Generally, in the marketing world, we understand that those products, even $27, even the $197 products are literally people qualifying themselves as your buyers. So the challenge with that, though, is that it requires a lot of complexity because you've got to have a lot of numbers. So if you're going to make any kind of upfront money, you've got to have a lot of traffic. You've got to have a lot of funnels and systems in place that work and that convert. What I've discovered is I go at it pretty backwards. And here's the reason. If someone doesn't like your $27 product, they're darn sure not going to give you their attention and invest $5,000. So what I've discovered is is that if you want to provide the highest quality of transformation in someone's life, let's just go straight to the big problem that they're experiencing and have them invest at that level. That does require you to be able to articulate that problem. It does require you to be able to communicate at the highest level. And the beauty of this is that in the very beginning when I'm working with clients, you know, they're getting on the phone when they go to quietly launch, I say, you know, their program out there and they're talking to prospects. And so some of the very best feedback that you're ever going to get is when you're on phone conversations with someone who is looking at investing in your high ticket program. And so the big thing there is, is you get that valuable data. You get that valuable information straight from the horse's mouth. A lot of people say, you know, you can't get a horse to, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And I don't believe that. If you give them enough salt, that horse is going to get very, very thirsty. And that's where it becomes very important for you to understand what those issues are. If someone has a problem, how do we know that, right? So how do we know they have that problem? What are things that are showing up in their lives that they can point to that they can say, like, you know, what are the symptoms of their problem? If you can do that, then you can really, really go straight for the high ticket program. Because let's face it, Clients are going to show up very differently at 500 than they do at $5,000 investments. Yeah. And so, I mean, that, that kind of like, I can go further into it, but that really gives you the idea of like where I'm coming from is that let's just skip all the low ticket stuff. Let's skip all the complexity. Let's go straight to transformation. And not only that, but you work with fewer clients at higher price points. And quite honestly, it's a lot of fun because you get to have a lot more of your life back. Yeah, and I can really agree with a lot of what Tony is saying here. We did a lot of that work myself when I worked with him about looking at the symptoms of some of the problems instead of just talking to your prospects and what you think their problem is. And sometimes they might think they know what their problem is, but you might need to frame it in a different way that's more appealing to them. I know, Tony, you used the analogy of like wrapping the pill in some cheese like you would for your (laughs) dog to kind of like hook them in a little bit because sometimes what you're really helping them with may not be what they think they need, but it actually gets to the symptom of their problem. So love what you're saying there. I want to take a minute though and go back to the three things that you listed about what's really important about turning your expertise into a high ticket program. And you talked about solving big problems that people care about, intimately knowing your prospect's pain and the systemic issues that are causing that pain, and then making offers of perceived value. So you've worked with so many different entrepreneurs and experts to try to help them do these things. Can you just give an example of like a problem that you help people with and how you help them turn this expertise into this type of high ticket program? Yeah. So I'll give you an example because there's one thing I want to reframe that you mentioned is when we look at, say for an example, a woman who's in a relationship And the breakup niche, by the way, is a very big niche. Matter of fact, not sure if you know, one of the ladies in the group right now is in that niche, right? And so one thing that we know is if we're solving a big problem, it's got to be a problem that someone already knows that they have. If not, then you've got to go through the education process with people. And, you know, I don't like to have to do that a whole lot if I don't have to. I love to, you know, if I want to nurture leads and things like that, I can do that. But what I want to do is, you know, I want to address whatever the bleeding neck issue is that someone already knows that they have. And so like with a woman who's in a relationship, for an example, who feels like as if the relationship is strained, like all of a sudden she feels like, you know, her, her boyfriend or her husband or whatever it is, is pulling away from her. That's a big problem for her. And she feels it intuitively. She knows something's wrong, but how does she know that? Right. And so this is where I wanted to reframe what you had mentioned. The systemic issues you know, are that really, I guess that would be the systemic issue in a sense. But what we're looking for is how do we know that she knows that, right? What is the symptom of that problem? And the problem is that she feels he's pulling away. How does she know that? He's not kissing her anymore when he comes home from work, right? Very subtle, 
But intuitively, she, you know, so here's my point. When you do something like that, say, for example, you send out an email and you've got a list of of maybe you're in that niche where it's not the breakup niche, but maybe, you know, a woman's trying to figure out what's going on in the relationship. You know, if you were to send an email out that said, is he not kissing anymore when he comes home from work? Right. You know, if that was the subject line, she's going to smash that open. She's going to smash that button to open up that email because it ties directly into what's important to her, right? Mm-hmm. So this is something that, you know, is very, very key. So how do you turn this into, you know, if you have an expertise in the relationship field, how do you turn this into, you know, a high ticket coaching program? Well, first and foremost is, is you know the problem that she needs to, that she wants solved. Let's focus on that because the fact is people buy what they want, not what they need. And what I've discovered is people are always trying to do one of three things. They're trying to get something, keep something, or get rid of something in their lives. You know, when it comes to relationship, they're either trying to get a relationship, they're trying to keep a relationship, and in some cases, they're trying to get rid of a relationship, right? So what we know and what I've known and from working in the high ticket space, the place that people are the most motivated to invest highly is when they're trying to eliminate some kind of pain, right? So in essence, you know, if we kind of shift gears a little bit, if you're in, if you're a relationship coach or say you're even more specialized and say you, you know, work with people who are in the midst of divorce and we know that it costs a hundred thousand dollars to go through divorce on average, plus the thing, you know, what all the children are going to go through and, and everything else, you know, you've got a hundred thousand dollar problem there, plus the emotional equivalent, probably two times that. And so if you go in and you say, well, listen, you know, you can either go through the hundred thousand dollars, you can go through all the the challenges, all the, but if you're truly want to be committed to making this work, it's only 10,000, right? So find out what it's costing someone to live without your solution and charge less, you know, and that's where I say, go find those big problems. Don't find a $5,000 problem because then you're going to be trying to charge 500. Yep. And one of the things I want to point out about Tony is so you can hear from this example that he works with a lot of people in this lifestyle space and he's really good at kind of pinpointing the underlying emotions that are driving a lot of people's fears, their pain and their decisions. And I come really from the business world of like healthcare and baby boomers and aging. And even though empathy and compassion and emotion is a huge part of it, a lot of times myself, as well as other consultants and my clients get kind of wrapped up in the business side of things. And Tony has been instrumental in helping me kind of look at it more from this like root cause underlying symptom perspective of like, what are the feelings that are driving some of these things? And it may sound too touchy feely for some of you, and I'm not a very touchy feely person, but I can assure you that it has made such a huge difference in how I'm crafting my offerings, how I'm going out and talking to people. And I'm just getting a lot more traction and, you know, people are nodding their heads and saying, oh, I've seen that. I can totally relate. And so I can say for me, and I think this is probably true for a lot of people, there is some real benefit to working with a coach that's outside of your industry and where you work because they can provide a perspective that probably a lot of other people don't have in your industry. And that can really make you stand out if you apply some of those techniques. Yeah. And I just want to also kind of compliment you as well, because you know, knowing that you're in, you know, more of this B2B kind of like less touchy feely. Most people might think, oh, you know, he's using examples that are touchy feely. But, you know, I mean, I've worked in dozens and dozens of niches. And I mean, I've been in, you know, where it's life coaching. I've been where, you know, it's been more business related. I've been in where it's more even like in the IBS niche, you know, irritable bowel syndrome. I mean, I've been in so many different niches. But one thing I know is always true is human behavior doesn't really change that much. All that changes is the language and the framing. And that's what you've really started to figure out here as of late, I've noticed, is that you've taken your very own expertise and what you understand about the market, but you've integrated this stuff and started to make it your own and started to get partners who want to promote, you know, and and do all these sort of things. So I think it really is important. That's why I like to work with really sharp people because they do understand their niche. They do understand their particular area of expertise. What I've discovered is even as experts, we can get so tied into what's important to us that we forget about what's important most to our prospects. And so instead of trying to talk about what we do, let's speak to what our prospects are missing. And when you can begin to start doing that and start addressing and articulating those issues that they're going through, you'll find that you can way more easily 
bring into the fold because I'm really big on inbound marketing. So I'm all about bringing people to me to want to talk with me, not going out and chasing people. And so in making that as smooth of a process as for me as possible, as well as for my prospects. Yeah, absolutely. I want to take a step back kind of to the bigger picture and hear from you about when you look at high ticket business coaching, what do you see now and in the future? (laughs) So, you know, and and we talk about big ticket, like big ticket really in some industries is like a hundred thousand dollars plus. And, you know, so in, when we're talking about big ticket in essence of, you know, like I've got buddies of mine that are, you know, straight up, they work with, you know, fortune 500 companies, they're working with, you know, large tech companies, you know, and for them, they're going in and doing these high ticket consulting gigs where it's, you know, it's a hundred K plus. And so, you know, I kind of want to differentiate there and just kind of point out what really is the the context for high ticket. So when we go in some of my clients, you know, big ticket to them are a thousand to 5,000 and and 10,000. Those are big ticket items and transactions. And so you know, I think really, depending upon the individual who's listening to this, you know, there's a range in there that we can go from, you know, say, I like to work with nothing less, depending on the specific industry, you know, 3000 to 5000. Those are the areas that I like to play in. And then, you know, ultimately, yes, you can go up to those $100,000 deals. What I start to see right now is because there's a very small micro niche online of the you know, for coaches specifically, which is really, really where I cut my teeth. I worked with life coaches for probably five or six years first, one-on-one in the trenches, and then was able to eventually evolve into working beyond just that niche because I found like a lot of the direct response type of marketing and, and strategies that I was implementing could be applied to a lot of different, a lot of different particular niches. And it wasn't because I made an intentional reason to go out and do that. It was because my coaching clients were starting to refer me other people because they were getting such results. And they were like, hey, can you help this person? I'd love to introduce you to them. And so I would interview them. I'd find my stuff could work and we'd go there. What I'm finding now when it comes is that you have to be really, really specific. You have to be very, very targeted about who you're helping. And you know this from working with me, Elena, is that if you try to be everything to everyone, you'll be nothing to nobody. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that to be absolutely even more crucial and more important these days as we start to get more crowded online, so to speak, you know, it's all about creating your own category in a lot of ways, but ultimately still, you know, focusing on some of the very fundamentals. So one of my things when it comes to big ticket, believe it or not, is I'm working into that space of not even having to do phone calls to qualify people to work with me. I'm doing a lot of very cutting edge stuff with email where literally I'm converting high ticket clients, 5,000, 7,500, you know, into, into clients that specifically just come through email communication and we're not even doing phone conversations. So when you ask me what are some of the things that I see coming up, I see that the mentality of people, if you can get really good at articulating that, I'm not saying that you're going to completely throw out phone calls because you may say, Tony, well, what if I don't want to work with this person? Well, you know, I'm always going to do an onboarding call with that person. I'm going to get on the phone with them. And if I decide like, Hey, you know, whoops, like this one shouldn't be probably in the group. I can always refund the money and it's not a big deal, but I'd rather have that problem than a problem of trying to figure out how people are going to want to invest in themselves through me. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's some really big changes there, you know, in that scope. And the other big change also, and I'll speak to this is rather than even just going for big ticket, one of the things is, is that I will embed myself. And one of the things I'm looking to do when it comes to big ticket is embed myself with companies whether it's companies or individuals. So someone has a particular business and they're already doing pretty well. I've got a buddy of mine who did this. They did about 18 million last year. They're up to about 33 million with one company. And, you know, basically he embed himself with that company and, you know, pretty much is the marketing and driving force behind it where he consults with them, but yet he gets a percentage of the company. So I think, I think what you're going to start also seeing, like I know myself, I do it. I do a hybrid of you know, financial investment up front with then embedding for a percentage of that company on the back end. And so, you know, I'm looking for points in that sense. So that is happening behind the scenes a lot more than what you hear about. And it's certainly something that you're going to, is going to be much more prevalent as we're moving forward is not only just getting that big ticket fee up front, 
and to, you know, date that particular individual or company, I should say, you know, in the beginning and get those initial results. And then, of course, we can go from there and say, hey, listen, let's make this a marriage and let's work together. And then, you know, of course, doing so, I'm embedded with that particular company. I get a percentage of that particular company's revenue, but but it's also because I've already proven and validated that I'm an absolutely important piece to that company growing and going well beyond, you know, six figures. Yeah, I love that. That's so smart. A lot of what you've talked about here does require some testing and learning. You've built kind of what I look at as like the dream business. You know, I would love to be in that position someday with all of the freedom that you have and, you know, people, lots of really great clients that want to work with me and in a way where I know I can really provide a lot of value and do it kind of in a way that doesn't involve necessarily going into an office and you can work from anywhere. But I'm sure that it hasn't always been like easy. You've learned a lot. You've probably stumbled. Can you give us some tactics for how you've grown your business in this way? Yeah, I've screwed up a lot. (laughs) (laughs) That's the number one tactic. Well, in in all seriousness, you know, I, I learned this a long time ago. There's no such thing as failure, only testing. You know, there's no such thing as losing, only learning. Um, I had a buddy of mine who just lost 50 grand, quote unquote, you know, and I was like, dude, you know, I'm so sorry. And he's like, I, he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I didn't lose anything. I just learned it was a $50,000 lesson. He's like, you think I'm going to make that one again? I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, so I think, you know, it's really kind of going back to the mindset, you know, of what is someone who is really absolutely dedicated and committed to the outcome. So, I mean, in the very beginning, you know, my thing was, is, you know, you got to have a baseline of expertise. If you don't have an expertise, the ability to facilitate a transformation in someone's life, it doesn't matter. Because here's what I've discovered is the information doesn't create the transformation. It's your ability to create the facilitation, right? So, you know, if you have that expertise, the next thing that that I want to make sure that people understand is that you've got to be able to generate leads. And as you know, you know, I've got a way to kind of quote unquote bootstrap that process without going out, spending a ton of money and learning Facebook ads and and figuring out your, you know, or if it's LinkedIn ads or any of these other different paid strategies, Google PPC, you know, it's about leveraging other people's resources. And so I think really when I look back at, you know, what my process was like, you know, it was in the trenches, honing my expertise, working one on one with people you know, some of those people, and and I was very, very transparent with people, you know, when they'd come to me and they were in a very different niche, I'd say, well, you know, listen, I've never done this in this particular niche. It's worked over here and I can point to where it's worked over here. What would you like to do? And I would give them that option and they'd say, well, let's do it, you know, because, you know, again, being so transparent, being upfront with them. And so we would. Some of the strategies that I like to do, I'll give you some very, very specific ones though. And you know, this one, when I'm looking to really understand someone's problem, You know, I'm always looking for where are they talking about it online. If you don't already have those clients, which I would really hope that you do, but if you do not, you know, or you don't have the ability to interview those people, that's the number one thing I would do. I would interview people I've either worked with and ask them what was life like before working with me. You know, what were how do you you know what were the problems? How do you know it was a problem? What was showing up in your life? But if you can't get those through direct interviews through phone conversation, the next thing I suggest is is going online and finding a community of where your people are talking about their problem. One way you can do that is going through to Amazon and find the books that your people are reading. And I want to do a real quick caveat to this. I'm always looking for competition. What's already out there that my prospects are buying? And most people think competition is maybe another consultant or another coach or another expert. And it's not always, you know, they could be buying DVD sets. They could be buying books. They could be buying audio programs. You know, they could be going to live events those are all competition for you. And so if you can find where people are communicating and talking about the results of going to those, and one of those great things is a book. So if you can go to a book where people are talking about, you know, go to look at the reviews for those books. This is something I learned early on when I was doing niche marketing online is finding out. And then I would basically go to those, those reviews and I would find the three star reviews are my favorite because those are the most objective. Those are going to tell you what they love and what they hate about the book and even share stories of transformations in there. And so I love to take that content and reverse engineer it. You know, someone can talk about a particular problem that they had with the book. And then I can take that problem and say, Hey, listen, are you tired of XYZ problem? You know, would you rather have ABC outcome? Then great. You know, maybe we should talk, you know, and it's a really great way because people think you're in their head, but the truth is you're just paying attention. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and I can attest that these tactics do actually work because I've used them myself. <laughs> exactly. And the same thing goes, you know, when you're not only when you're, you know, working with the clientele, but in, you know, one of the strategies that I teach is, 
you know, is finding people that have assets that you don't have that you need. And again, you can use these very same strategies when approaching those types of partners, you know, that you can use to leverage and quietly launch. And I've, I've mentioned this before, I probably should say it, you know, quietly launching your product, your high ticket program. I'm not a big fan, as you know, of going out and announcing it to the entire world and making sure, you know, creating this program and, and spending, you know, hundreds of hours on it, spending three months on creating it and then only to launch it to crickets. You know, I see this so many times. I see people say, oh, my new website is, is available and I'm so excited and I'm going to be launching it here in four days. And then they launch it and then like crickets, you know, because, again, they're usually talking about what's important to them, not what's important to the prospect. Prospects don't really care about your website being launched. And be quite frank, they don't really care about your program being launched either. So what I have is a, a little process, which, you know, we go through what's called the quiet little launch. And so if you, you know, if you end up launching it, quietly, which means it's not going out to the world. It's only going maybe to a very few specific partners. If for some reason it bombs or for some reason it doesn't go amazing, you know, you don't have the public humility. You don't have, you know, those hundreds of hours because you don't even create the program until you've sold it. Okay. And that's a very big finite issue that I see in the marketplace is spending all of this time creating what we think the market needs instead of actually going out and selling them what they want and then delivering it. And that's what I have found has been, you know, kind of going back to answering your original question, I've made that mistake. I worked with, with a gentleman, a highly, highly touted marketer, very associated with some very large names. If I mentioned it here, I, you know, you would know it. We spent three hours. I created the, oh, excuse me, three hours, three months. I created the vast majority of the content. I was spending, you know, 14 hour days creating this for like up to three months we launched it and we sold like maybe about $4,000 worth. And that was the moment I was like, I will never do that again. And then that's when I started coming up with and realizing, you know, how I could actually market big ticket programs without actually having created it, that I could get the market to validate it. Because here's what I know. People will love to give you opinions until you ask them for a credit card. <laughs> you ask for a credit card, they give you the credit card. That's when you know that it works. So yeah, no, and that's true. And I, I think there's a lot of value in not creating the program until you've sold it for another reason, because I know going out, talking to promo partners, and even to your prospective clients, they're going to give you feedback. And you know, some of it you might roll your eyes at and not take into account, but some of it's probably going to actually be valuable. And it, you know, for me personally, some of that feedback has led me to actually change what is in my program. And if I had just created it all beforehand, I would have invested that time doing the work up front than having to redo parts of it. And so this really allows you to be really efficient with your time and also design a product based on, you know, your client's actual needs that they tell you. Mm -hmm. yep, absolutely. Saves time, saves money. Yep. So Tony, you seem like you're pretty good at taking some time for yourself and having work-life <laughs> balance, but I know you work hard. I want to hear a little bit about your tactics for self-care. Yeah, no, great question. One of my favorites. So these days I'm real big on breath work. I have a very holistic background in the sense I've, you know, I can't cuss on this, this show probably, but I've been through a lot of poop in my life, I would say. <laughs> I've been through, listen, you know, I don't have a pretty background. You know, I, I don't know my father. I wasn't raised by my mother. I had some really bad childhood abuse growing up. I was raised by my great grandparents, though, at, at said point and, you know, was instilled with a lot of values and morals that and a hell of a work ethic. I've always probably worked harder than I ever worked smarter. And it was only because of my upbringing. And so, you know, because I was raised by my great grandparents where work ethic was a really big thing and you worked. And so it took me, you know, a long time to move through that. You know, I went through some, I went through a divorce. I went through probably about five years of really bad depression, you know, even near suicidal, pretty much apostate and a lot of beliefs. So I've got a pretty, pretty crazy story in that sense. But since then, you know, done a lot of emotional work, a lot of hired emotional healing coaches, which I always say the reason I got into this business is because, you know, coaching saved my life, you know, consulting saved my life in a lot of ways. And so, you know, for me today, it's now, you know, I do, I don't notice we're doing this call here at 10 a.m. my time Pacific because I don't schedule any calls until 10 a.m. in the morning because I do have morning rituals of self-care, you know, from meditation to you know, just really journaling. I'm very big on journaling and, and sharing and getting out of what's in my head 
so I can drop down and be in my heart because, you know, I do truly feel that marketing is, is your ability to be compassionate. Marketing is not something you do to someone. Marketing is, is the, the business of making promises and keeping them. And I think the one that we can do that is for ourselves to remain completely grounded in spirit, completely grounded in our understanding of our natural mental talents. I don't believe we have strengths and weaknesses. I think we all have mental talents. And then, you know, a lot of us put ourselves in positions to where we're trying to leverage non-mental talents. You know, if you ever told the goldfish to climb the tree, they're going to always <laughs> feel like a failure. So I just always make sure that I put myself into positions and situations that allow me to leverage my most natural mental talents. And I've just really probably over the last decade figured that part out because I did chase the money for the longest time. And now today, what I do is I just focus on solving big problems that I can show up and leverage my most natural mental talents in supporting people doing. And I do that, you know, like today, you know, I'm, I'm going to be taking off Friday through Monday. I won't be available. I'm going on a spiritual retreat, you know, that will take me out to not touch, you know, any digital stuff, <laughs> you know, so to speak. And, you know, and I've lived in it. And I also just made a huge move to Laguna Beach. I just sold everything I had just about through a five by eight trailer on the back of my Lexus, drove cross country to from Florida to Laguna Beach. And now, you know, I do a lot of hiking. I'm always big in, you know, working out. I love fitness. So really my body, my breathing creates the balance that I need. And that's really what it comes down to is, you know, for me, it's breath. I've done a lot of breath work in the past. I find that a lot of entrepreneurs, and you'll probably appreciate this, Elena, a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, people who run businesses, I don't care, you know, if they're coaches or if they're CEOs, you know, you deal with a lot of stress. And when you find that, you know, you are in your head a lot, it's because I find that people are breathing very shallow. And so for me, breath work and yoga and just, you know, even hiking and getting that huffing and puffing going allows you to breathe and get back into your body so that you can practice balance, so you can be present, give yourself the most self-care and love that's possible. And so that's something I could go do a whole nother hour on, but I'll kind of stop it there. But those are just kind of a, a fast forward of, of some of the things that I like to do. And a lot of it is fitness. A lot of it is yoga. A lot of it is breath work. A lot of it is just being present with ourselves and just really hearing what we said, but know what we're saying. And so that we show up as genuinely as possible within our businesses, leveraging only our natural talents, outsourcing the rest of the things that are not our talents. And I find that life is a whole lot more fun. And I get to structure my life around my business. Most people have a business and, they're, and they let a little bit of life you know, show up after that. And I just don't believe in that. I want to develop my business and I'm going to build, you know, my life around the business. And for me, that's been a big shift and it's helped really immensely. Yeah, I love it. And a lot of what Tony's talking about is part of why I love working with him because a lot of that's really aspirational for me. I mean, I do a lot of the same self-care things in terms of being present and going on hikes and being active. But there's definitely like mindset issues that creep into all of us. And that's one of the benefits of having that outside perspective from a coach to kind of get you out of your own head at times. And Tony has mm -hmm. been instrumental in doing that for me. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Tony. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's been a joy. Yeah. So you've given us a lot of great tips today. I want to go ahead and close with the parting piece of guidance for us. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is if you are, you know, an expert, if you have a business, I would tell you that the big ticket mentoring is something that just about every business can benefit from in implementing. I'm not telling you to drop, you know, your traditional revenue streams and what you're doing by no means. But if you would like more ease, if you would like to create more balance, it's something that's completely attainable if you just stop and really write down like, what's my perfect day? And I know that sounds a little hokey, but it's something that I did several years back. And it's probably been one of the biggest things that I did. I wrote down the 10 things at the time. I, I wrote down the 10 things that I hated about my life. Now you can apply this to your business. You could write down the things that you, and maybe hates a strong word, but you could write down on one side of the page, like I wrote down what I hated about my life. And that comes very easy for us as human beings. We can, you know, because we're hardwired for fear, we're hardwired, you know, to make sure we don't get eaten by things and <laughs> predators. It's kind of where we come from. So when you do that, those sort of things that you really dislike either about your life, around your business, around your relationships, whatever it might be, that's going to come very, very easy. So then what's a fascinating thing to do is to then reverse engineer that, which means take that first thing. And just simply write down what's the opposite of that experience. 
And because if you try to write down the opposite of that experience in as much detail, we're just not as wired. It takes a very special human being to be able to do that. Not that we're not special, but a person who's probably further along on a particular journey. And so I did that several years ago. And when I did, I looked up and it was probably only about a year later, about seven out of those 10 things were completely shifted. They were completely gone from those pains and the things that I did not want. So, you know, kind of one of those parting things is, you know, write down what is it that you'd maybe dislike most about your business? Because just because you run a business does not mean that you are forced to live within a particular paradigm. Now today, and as you know, Elena, with the technology that's available, we can create, and I'm living proof. I only have a high school education. I'm not that smart, but I'm not that stupid either. <laughs> and, and I think that you know, today more than ever, you can leverage and serve people at a very, very high level with, you know, a certain amount of leverage. And don't get me wrong, Elena, you know, it takes work to get the first one out the door. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell all my clients, the first one is the worst one because it takes time to get that out. And there's going to be some stuff, but when it's done, it's done. Then you get to run, you know, you get to put people in that, in that program and you get to start to enjoy and experience the freedom that comes from being able to do that. So I think I just threw like about three things at you, you know, of parting wisdom, but just get really clear what you don't want right now and start to get clear on what you do want. And, and of course, you know, Elena, if, if they want some help with implementing those aspects of what they want and implementing a bigger ticket type of process that can not only provide more income, but even more fulfillment overall, then obviously, you know, I'd love to talk to them. So. Yeah, absolutely. And if you all want to get in touch with Tony, we'll have all his information on our show notes, or you can just feel free to reach out to me. I cannot recommend him highly enough. So I hope today's episode inspires you to think more about how you can find your passion and live your best life. For more information, including links to resources that Tony and I chatted about today and how best to get in touch with him, head on over to our website, theboostpodcast.com, and check out our show notes from this episode and catch the Boost bonus. Tony, I want to thank you for sharing your journey with us today. And remember that anything is possible for you. Now that you completed this episode, the next step is to join the Boost Squad for strategic insights, tips, and tricks, as well as exclusive resources designed specifically to accelerate your personal and professional growth. All this and more is waiting for you at theboostpodcast.com.